Okay, we are covering the chapter on uh, the spoofing and uh, we talked about blind spoofing and active spoofing. Now we will try to understand what is IP spoofing. As I told you that spoofing is not related to IP only. As you can see, we have ARP, we have web, we have DNS, different kind of spoofings which are there. The terminology, the terminology for that is important to understand because spoofing means that you are trying to pose someone which you are not. Like the hacker takes control and he puts the router in sleep mode or he can fool around the sender that the router is off. I am the router so transfer all packets through me and I'll be transferring it to the receiver. So in the middle, he or she would be capturing the packets and all the information which is flowing on that network. Now IP spoofing consists of a hacker accessing target disguised as a trusted third party. So he'll claim as if he's a trusted partner who's doing things and sitting in the middle can be performed by hackers through either blind or active methods of spoofing which we covered earlier. Now our spoofing is modifying the address resolution protocol table of hacking the, uh, for hacking purposes. Now ARP table stores the IP address and the corresponding MAC addresses. Router searches for ARP table for destination computer MAC address. ARP spoofing attack involves detecting broadcast, faking the IP address, and then responding to the MAC address of the hacker computer. As I told you that a list of known communications which are taking place on a router are maintained in the ARP tables, which is noting down or having a log of the IP address and the MAC address. So if it's the same IP and MAC address from a source and destination and the packets are communicating with each other, it consider it as a safe communication. And once that's done, next time if it comes, you don't have to verify lots of things. The packet is directly forwarded to the receiver. Now, what they do is that they send lots of fake commands or requests to the server that the server starts thinking that since I'm receiving lots of requests from this IP and this MAC address, this is a safe sender. And in that way, they exploit the vulnerability of the ARP tables. Now web spoofing is hacker spoofs an IP address through a website Hacker can transfer information or get information. Hacker can spoof using strategy that ensures that all communication between the website and the user is directed to the hacker's computer. Hacker may also falsely acquire the certificate used by the website. Now, this is the most common kind of spoofing where people are either trying to control the web servers or any computer which is of importance in a network. They'll install a Trojan on it or they'll use any malwares on it with the help of which they'll open ports on the computer or they'll have a bot installed on it which would be sending all information related to that computer or the communication which is taking place on that web server to the remote machine. Now once that's done, they'll be able to collect all information which is flowing on the computer. It could be customer data, it could be sales data, it could be credit card details, expiry dates and all those related information which is being sent to the web server. So that's why all web servers which are hosting websites are the prime targets mostly. It's not because the web servers are weak. Mostly the cases is that the application which is built on any platform, whether it's PHP, ASP, ASP.NET, C Sharp or anything, there are poor programming practices used in development of those applications which makes those applications vulnerable. Once those applications are vulnerable, people use the vulnerabilities or known exploits to penetrate using that application 
on the web server now in the uh, practical life example whenever something like that happens and even if one application or uh, lots of websites are hosted on a web server and one application is compromised through which someone got access to the web server that web server is completely isolated from the network and all other websites which are hosted on that web server they are asked to have a fresh built of that website and then post it on the web server the website which was there existing on the server when it was compromised no data is allowed to be moved from that server to the new server so that making sure that no infected files are being transferred from the infected computer to the new computer you don't know which file was infected you don't know which file was compromised you don't know which file is original and which is fake maybe there would be a page in your application that you have developed in for example php he can open the same page and can modify the code of it and then save it and save it on the same hard drive so it becomes very difficult to check it unless and until if you are matching the timestamp of all the files which were modified on the computer on a specific time because if you are building an application using asp uh, using visual studio all files which would be generated by visual studio would have same timestamp but if a file is separately modified always it would have a different detail or the timestamp on it so they are usually caught by that but that's the easiest way you'll have to do deep down details investigative analysis of the web server before you open it for the community now dns spoofing or as we talked uh, about it like dns poisoning dns hacker changes a website ip address to a ip address of the hacker's computer because what dns is doing is it's linking the ip to host and host to ip either ways so if you have a website and you have a dns working in your organization either if you will enter the ip address in the browser it would take you to the same website or if you will write the name of it which is a fully qualified name of the website for example cms or content management system or any department website it would still take you over there so what they do is they alter the information behind a dns entry that if you are going to for example cms before it was going to your local address of the website which is hosted now since it's modified it would take you outside the network and you'll be accessing a look alike website which won't be a actual website but from the hacker who's trying to uh, collect all the information altering the ip address directs the user to the hacker's computer and user is accessing the hacker's computer under the impression that he or she is accessing a different legitimate website now there are lots of uh, spoofing tools uh, not limited to these but since uh, um, uh, this book is not the latest release or the latest version which was released by uh, by the publisher at that time apps and ethercap what we call it wireshark these days or our spoofs used to be the uh, famous tools in order to do this spoofing now ethercap or wireshark provides a list of options that can be used to perform various spoofing operations which are there in the book hackers select the action to perform from multiple operations for example r poisoning view the interface or packet filtering etc if you, um, you you remember that we use some of these uh, uh, different commands in order to do the things on Wireshark, they are just giving an example of it that you can use some of these um, tools as well or scripts uh, interface type to uh, gather more information about your prime target. Now, ARP uh, spoof is a part of uh, DSNF uh, suite, which is not available at the moment, can be used to spoof the ARP tables. General syntax is, for example, you'll write ARP spoof, then the interface, as we did it in WinDump, and then the target host 
to get the details of it. You can change the MAC address of a specified for IP address in the ARP table. Prevention and mitigation is to avoid a defined um, uh, and to defend against the IP spoofing is whenever possible avoid any trust relationship that rely upon the IP address only. So there should be a second mechanism to verify the identity of the individual user rather than just depending on the IP address. On Windows systems if you cannot remove it change the permissions on system root host file to allow the read only access so that no one is able to make any changes to the remote computer. Only Linux systems uses TCP wrappers to allow access only for the certain systems. Install a firewall, all filtering rules, use encrypted or secure protocols like IPsec, which is IP security, and use random ISN. Because a normal way to calculate the next sequence number is the sequence number that you have now, if you add the length of the data packet which was received earlier so you will add that length to this packet or to the sequence number to have the next sequence number it's fairly easy to do that and on wireshark we can easily see the sequence number now and then it would show the sequence number which would appear after that so you can calculate it yourself and if there is a packet which was missing in the middle it would identify that it's not a communication between the two. Maybe it lost some packets in the communication in between. To avoid uh, or defend against the ARP poisoning, uh, use methods to deny changes without proper authorization on the ARP table. So it's not like it's open and any new entry will be automatically modified on the ARP table. If anything new comes in, it should go to the admins to verify it before it's updated on the ARP tables. Now employ the static ARP tables where you are defining the entries but it becomes a bit cumbersome where every day you'll have to review lots of new entries. Log changes to the ARP table and that brings us to the end of the chapter. Now let me explain one thing when you are especially working on virtual machines for example on VirtualBox or VMware workstation whenever you are creating a virtual machine it would have a Mac adapter attached to it of course which would be a virtual Mac adapter if you will clone the same virtual machine there is an option to clone the virtual machine it would have exactly the same MAC address as the original machine. Makes sense because it's a clone of the virtual machine. So what's the problem if you are using same clone of a virtual machine on the network? They are saying that you can copy the MAC address of one machine to another. On virtual environment, it's really easy to set up any MAC address to any virtual machine. And that virtual machine you can easily define a static IP address and you know you can go to network uh, uh, and sharing center or control panel and you can set up a static IP to a computer now if that's done on a virtual machine and you can easily change the MAC address of that machine that machine can act as any zombie on the network pretending to be someone who's actually not that machine so what happens is if I'll have a, for example, if uh, a hacker would be able to copy the MAC address and an IP address of a machine within the network, they can create a virtual machine having the same IP address and the MAC address. What would happen is that DNS is dumb, uh, no, DHCP is dumb in that case, when it would see a MAC address, which is already available in the database of it, it would automatically assign the same IP address which was assigned to the original owner of that MAC address. So you will not be able to communicate both of them simultaneously on the network. Rather, if the IP address changes on the actual computer, it would change automatically on this one also because it is maintaining the MAC address. So, if you are cloning a virtual machine in any virtualization software, make sure that you are changing the MAC address of it, otherwise one would be working and the other one would stop working. 
that's it for today as far as this chapter is concerned.